Hello and welcome to Talk Solon. I'm Charlotte Breer Edney and joining me today on the sofa to discuss the biggest local and national stories are Suzanne Pepper from the Gospel Older Hello. Persons Forum and Dee Hass from CPRE Hampshire. Thanks ladies so much for coming in today. Now I know you've both got things you want to talk about but today I want to start off with something that I spotted in the Daily Mail. It's a lady who apparently has saved £11,000 by living frugally. She has ditched products like toothpaste and shampoo and swapped them for things like olive oil soap, although I'm not sure what that is. And also, um, what do we say? She is using water and cloths instead of toilet paper. Um, so is this a lifestyle, Dee? You know, you, you like the environment. Is this a lifestyle you're going to be taking on? <laughs> <laughs> I could adopt that very happily. I'm not sure my children would be very pleased, uh, or my husband, but... Yeah, I think the thing is, I do think that we have gone a little bit too far. I mean, all our grannies and grandpas were living during the war and they had very frugal lifestyles and they really did know how to save food and save money. And then the 60s happened and everyone got a little bit throw away. And I think that a little balance coming back again isn't a bad thing, actually. I think she may have gone too far with the Louvre paper. So OK, so you're keep, keeping the Louvre paper, I definitely but you keep the Louvre paper. other things. Yeah. She says she bought all her children's toys from charity shops. I mean, your children are a bit older mm, now. Mine is, but do yeah. you think they would have been happy if they Yeah, been, why not? So. I don't see why not. I mean, I, we, we, we get sort of handy hand-me-downs at that point. And, you know, the thing is that they don't really if they're very little they don't know where the toys have come from i don't think no, the, the no. trouble is that they want the very latest thing but if they you know you if they're brought up to have things from charity shops maybe it's an exciting to go for a visit to the charity shop i think it's great <laughs> what about you suzanne do you think this is the way forward should we all be kind of giving up this woman saved so much money apparently she was able to give up her job I think it's a brilliant idea. Mm. Um, there, there are levels. I mean, there's a thing in today's paper about if there's a bog off offer, is it actually better value for mm. you? So it is difficult when you go shopping. That's why I do mine online, because I can sit at home with a cup of coffee and work it out slowly rather than trolling around a shop, you know, supermarket full of people. I think charity shops for toys, clothes are a brilliant idea. Mm. It's recycling. Mm. Um, upcycling, shabby chic, whatever you call it, it's recycling stuff. And if it means that you can save money, if it means that you don't have to go out to work, I mean, that's brilliant. Do you think we all have kind of too much stuff? Yes. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. how, you know, do you think you have too much yes. stuff? Oh, do yeah. Do you ever think, oh, I'm going to get rid of it and then actually sort of can't quite get around to it? I try. I'm better at decluttering when I'm in a bad mood for some reason. <laughs> if you're grumpy, you can just throw stuff out. And I tried to make the rule of one thing in, one thing out. Right. Now, my husband is at home roaring with laughter at this because he knows what my wardrobe's like. <laughs> but you do just have to be sensible about it. And I think we do all have far too much stuff. Mm. It's a standing yeah. joke at Christmas, isn't it? You know, with these mm. massive piles of toys for the kids. Mm. And they just get fed up with them. Mm. Either spread them out during the year, perhaps, or go to charity shops and see what you can get there and save some mm. money. I remember getting my first Barbie from a charity shop, although yeah. she, I don't think she survived her haircuts very well. <laughs> <laughs> I end up having punk Barbie, so... <laughs> yeah, but if it, if it costs less money, it's not oh, quite such a crisis, so is it? <laughs> that's right. I go to the auction sometimes at Pump House. All right. And if I want to change my kitchen crockery, I'm not paying a huge mm. amount of money for a complete dinner service. I'm paying £10, thank you very much, for an eight-place dinner service. Mm. That's oh. great. Yeah. That's a good idea. So what's this thing about buy one, get one free offers? Well, in the supermarkets, you see all the bog offs, don't you? And, and then you have to try and work out whether it's more economical to do that or just buy what you want. Mm. In abroad, in North America particularly, if there's a bog off offer, if you only want one rather than two, they actually charge you half. Hmm, they manage better. it much more effectively well, than we do a here. Good idea. I know. Yeah. Much more sensible. Mm -hmm. But the pricing is, is generally very different, so you just have to think about it very hard. Mm -hmm. So I can do it at home where it says it's this much for 100 min or something, and then go, oh, yeah, well, actually, I'll have that one. Mm. Mm. Oh, no, they do that thing, you know, and it'll be three for this much, and then yeah. and it's like out of a selection of things, yes. and then you'll find if I bought three of that one, it would actually be cheap, you know, more expensive. Oh, God, it's just, it's, yeah, it, it can, can be, be a difficult. bit of a nightmare, yeah. And mm. if you're not hard up, then you may say, who cares? But if you are watching the pennies, mm. it can make an awful lot of difference. The other thing is that you can easily buy one and get one free, and then, but if you're not going to actually eat the second one, yep. 
then it's a waste and you yeah. you know it'll end yeah. up in the bin. I mean, and some things it's okay. I mean, mm. you know, for example, yeah. toothpaste or toilet paper, mm. that's fine Absolutely. by one yeah. one free, yeah. but you know, perishables, yeah. not mm. so much. No. Well, we'll end up with yet another mountain of food, isn't it? Because yeah. there's um, the cafe in Gosport, I'm desperate trying to think of its name, that is basically they their menus are made using the food that is on its mm, best before by, day, yeah. you know, and you pay what you think it is worth. Mm. How great is that, rather than just mm. throwing it all away? Yeah, and of course in France, just this week, the new law has come in that supermarkets aren't allowed to throw food away anymore, mm. so they have to either mm. donate it to kind of food charities or yeah. food banks and things like that. I think that's an astoundingly Absolutely. good idea. Oh, it's Absolutely. crazy to throw such good stuff away, yeah. and we don't know what we're, you know, mad, really. Yeah, it is, it is nonsense. Mm. Right, we've agreed it's nonsense. Okay, moving on. Um, I wasn't going to talk about this today because I thought it was over, but then I found that actually in the Portsmouth area, Jeremy Hunt was still trending on Twitter. So here we are, we're going for it. Jeremy Hunt has acknowledged that an imposition of the doctor's contracts would cause considerable dismay among junior doctors, he says. And um, so obviously he's gone ahead and said basically, you know, just, you're going to have to lump it, you're going to have this contract, that's it. Do you, do you think that's the right idea? I'll start with you, Dee. Um... It's a difficult one. I, I think that they need to come to an agreement because I think at the moment it's not fair to the doctors and I think it's not safe for the patients. I think we are very lucky in this country. We have excellent health care compared to other countries. And I think that we, um, that, that junior doctors are, do have a bad deal of it, actually. And I think they get very tired and they're on their shifts for far too long. And they, you know, it's very easy to make a mistake if you're tired. And I think that they just need to get together and come up with uh, something they can all agree on. Because, you know, our, 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 we as patients, you know, our safety is, is at risk, I think. So I, I, I come down on the junior doctor's side, I think. Okay, so you think Jeremy Hunt's not, not playing his cards quite right in this Well, I think he's going to cause some, you know, there's just going to be a lack of morale, there's going to be a problem, you know, they're, they're going to be very unhappy, aren't they? And unhappy doctors are unhappy patients, I think. Okay. Do you agree with that, Suzanne? Uh, not quite. Okay. Not quite. I, I think there is confusion. They talk about a seven-day NHS. We have a seven-day mm. NHS because I haven't noticed mm. any hospitals closing down on Saturdays and Sundays. Right. I understand that it is the discussion about whether they should get paid extra money for working on Saturdays and Sundays. And the reason there are doubts about their salary going down is because if you opt to work Monday to Friday and a Saturday and a Sunday, you in effect get paid for seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven days in a week because you're getting paid double time for the extra, you know, for the weekend days. Well, I don't want, like you, a doctor that's been working that number of hours. I want a doctor that has worked sensible hours and I don't understand why in this day and age, Saturdays and Sundays mm. have premium rates of pay. I do come from a world where um, people work seven days a week, 365 days a year, no extra pay for bank holidays and are expected to do that as part of their contract. Now, if you don't like your contract, you leave the job. And you could say, well, we run the risk of all junior doctors leaving the country. Well, we do run that risk, mm. but they have to understand that economy means that you have to make the best use of the resources that you have and paying them extra for working Saturday and Sunday isn't the best use of, of the amount of money that the NHS have, I don't think. And do you think, so what, do you have any reply to, I guess, well, to Suzanne? I, I mean, I, kind of I, coming from the, um, I think Polar Suzanne opposite. knows more about the detail than I do, but I, and I think that's very sensible. And, but I agree, I don't, you know, you, the, the hospitals aren't closing at weekends. I think there are some statistics that you are more likely to die if you've been in hospital at weekends. Because there are less staff Because there, there are yes. less staff. That's the, that's the yes. issue. And obviously, we don't want that happening, really. Um, and, and I think I, I think as long as they're not being given too many hours and long, too long a shift, I'm, I'm with you. I don't think yeah. they should get extra for no. the weekends, necessarily. If they've got Monday and Tuesday off instead of Saturday yeah. and Sunday, it's fine. Yeah. The, the new but is it fine though? What about you know the young doctors that have young families, perhaps who are at school, who might want to spend time with their young families on weekends, and who are now being told, well, under this new contract, if you want a Saturday off in next September, you'll have to book that off as annual leave. 
mm. just to maybe. I mean, they don't have to work maybe, every weekend. No, they don't. I, work know, there every was one being to interviewed. Be sure that it was they've got that one weekend off. in three, wasn't it? I think approximately, but but they have to do that now. Mm. If they want to be sure to have the Saturday off, they have to make sure their rotors and their shift patterns work that way. But they often don't get their rotors until a week before. Well, is that fair? No, that's just bad management. Mm. But that's, I don't think that's anything to do with whether they're paid a premium at weekends or not. There are less staff at weekends because people don't want to work or they can't afford to pay for the extra premium for them working mm. at weekends. Um, the latest reports show that satisfaction with the NHS in terms of hospital services is at the same rate as it was back in 2011. So it's sort of peddled backwards. Mm. And that generally, I think, is those that have used the inpatient service. And Why do you think that? I, I think people feel dissatisfied because of the lack of staff. They can see the staff are stretched. The nursing staff certainly are doing a lot of running around to try and I mean, catch one of the on things, things that's being said is exactly that once they've done this to the doctors, they know that they can do it to the nurses and then they can mm -hmm. do it to the support staff and then you know everybody else it's just going to be a domino effect so what you're saying is oh well there shouldn't be a premium for working on the weekends for either the doctors or the nurses or anybody else it's just going to end up with no one wanting to work at weekends so there's no po why why would you want to work on a saturday or a sunday if you're going to be paid the same amount for working on a tuesday there's no incentive to do it is there but it but there is no incentive to do it but it is simply a matter of when you're offered a job you look at the contract and if the contract says, this is what you get paid, for, and these are the hours you work, well, that's it. They are it. looking at the contract by yeah. saying, no, we're not mm. happy. Yeah. Well, I mean, and they don't get much choice, really, because if you're a young doctor, you either work in the NHS or you don't work. They have, sort of have a monopoly I mean, it is on the employment. NHS. Yeah. They can go be GP. Mm. And they can go abroad. Mm. Yes. All right, guys, well, I'm going to have to wrap it up them. for this segment. Thanks for that. We've got much more coming up just after the break, so stay with us.